Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another batch cooking weekly meal prep video. These videos are intended to make your life easier throughout the week. We've got to take a little time on Sunday or Monday and get our prep game on. But after we do that, y'all, the week is going to be a piece of cake. I hope these videos are inspirational, motivational, and give you some ideas when whipping up keto and low carb foods in the kitchen. If you want to see what we're making this week, keep on watching. In today's video, we're gonna be making waffles from the Southern Keto Cookbook with sausage on the side, so it's waffles and sausage bowls. We're gonna be prepping some damn berries, blackberries precisely, making some boiled eggs, making easy chili from the Southern Keto Cookbook, doing a little freezer prep, keto queso as always, chicken salad for lunch, air frying some bacon, chicken tender clubs, brining some Chick-fil-A chicken tenders for sandwiches, and making flourless peanut butter cookies for dessert. Let's get to it. Work it, make it, do it, makes us honor, better, faster, stronger. We're first going to be making some waffles from the Southern Keto Cookbook. I've made these a million times. They are delicious and they make a ton. I think the macros are lower than what she suggests because they make way more for a serving than what she actually says in the cookbook. So you can lower that if you have the cookbook in my opinion. But here's the ingredients we're going to need, but I am adding some more Jordan skinny syrup. I'm telling y'all that it's making such a difference in these baking recipes, making things super moist and delicious. Going in with a full brick of cream cheese there and gonna give that a nice little mix. Going in with some eggs, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Lots of eggs, but like I said, no flour here. So that's why we gotta go with the eggs and the cream cheese. Give that a good beat until it's nice and smooth. You don't want any lumps behind. I like using Lakanto monk fruit. Y'all ask me all the time. I love it. I don't feel like it has an aftertaste. Two tablespoons and then a tablespoon of baking powder. Cinnamon, I think that's a teaspoon there, actually two teaspoons. And then going in with some vanilla pure extract, one teaspoon of that. And then we're gonna go in with a Jordan's skinny syrup. I'm using the iced cinnamon roll. You can use whatever flavor you have. One tablespoon makes such a difference, y'all. They have all their like pumpkin spice flavors out right now. So if you wanna get your pumpkin spice waffles on, you can definitely do that. I have them and I plan on trying it. So go ahead and give this a good mix. And I like to let my batter sit for a few minutes so that baking powder can sit and get all ready to go. I'm using my waffle maker or what we like to call our chaffle maker here. And this isn't even a full fourth of a cup. You don't want to overfill it. You want to put just enough to cover it up. And then it comes out looking so beautiful. They are not crispy, I will say. So if you want a crispy waffle, pop these bad boys in the air fryer and they'll be crispy but they are delicious as is. So here we go, batch prepped for our waffles. I will tell you, these did not last because I made these on a Saturday and we ate these for breakfast and I made them and prepped them for breakfast for the week, so I didn't have any left. Chalk Zero Maple Vanilla Syrup is my favorite. I'm gonna go ahead and put a tablespoon into two containers from the Dollar Tree. I love these little portable ones. I really need to get some from Costco is what you've been telling me. I love these glass dishes, these separated ones. They're from Amazon. I have them linked down below. These chicken sausages, three are for a serving and they have zero net carbs and you can get them from Costco. The ingredients are super clean. And then I'm gonna go in with two of my waffles and that's gonna be my breakfast for mornings with the syrup on the side. It was such a nice treat and I really enjoyed it. Eat the damn berries, y'all. Y'all ask me all the time, new people, what are the damn berries? They are just berries, but I have the saying, eat the damn berries because some people on keto don't like them because they are a little bit more in carbs, but blackberries especially, guys, are low in carbs. You can eat a ton and it's only like two net carbs, and these ones are beautiful, huge, juicy, and I've been eating on them all week on the side for lunches and thoroughly enjoying them. Putting them in a Dollar Tree container and we're good to go. Now going in with my boiled eggs. I'm not gonna make as many as I usually do. I think I'm only making eight, but I love making them in the Instant Pot. One cup of water is all you need. 
For my pasture raised are the ones that I get from our local egg guy. I only like to cook them for a minute because I feel if you cook them over a minute, it really overcooks the egg in my opinion. If you're doing regular eggs, y'all ask me, I would do three minutes when I did regular white eggs, but if you're using pasture raised, like one minute, y'all even suggest doing zero and just letting them sit. I like to put them in a little cool ice bath as you see here, and then I peel them and put them in my Dollar Tree container. It lasts for the entire week never had an issue with them spoiling or going bad and they are delicious on the side with our parfaits in the morning for the week now going in with our easy chili from the southern keto cookbook y'all this stuff is so good. It is just regular chili. It just doesn't have beans, okay? So just because something says keto on it doesn't mean that it's not what you're used to eating before on your standard American diet. Here are all the ingredients. These are the lowest carb diced tomatoes and sauce and stuff I could find. And here is ground meat I got on sale at Winn-Dixie. We're gonna be prepping that for the freezer here in a few minutes. But going in with my spices, I've got some minced onion here. Gonna go in with some garlic. I love this huge thing of garlic garlic from Costco. I use a lot of garlic, so that's going to come in handy. You're going to brown your meat and I am draining the fat off because there was a ton of fat. Now going in with an entire can of tomato sauce, an entire can of my petite diced tomatoes and a cup of water. Then we're going to go in with our other seasonings, which is chili powder. This gives it a nice spice guys, two tablespoons of that. And then also a tablespoon of cumin. This stuff is so good. It tastes so good. Homemade some salt and pepper as well. You're gonna bring this to a simmer y'all and then we're gonna let it actually to a boil and then we're gonna let it simmer for 20 minutes and you're done. And this stuff freezes so well, I've made it before. So you can pop it out, defrost it, heat it up and you can have it on the long side of your hot dogs or whatever you're eating and it's delicious. Super easy, not complicated and easy ingredients. I'm all about it. That Southern Keto Cookbook is amazing. If you haven't purchased it yet, it's linked down below y'all. Definitely buy it because we'll be cooking together every single Sunday with batch cooking together. So I've got it in a Dollar Tree container. I'm gonna put it in the fridge and let it hang out until we're ready to eat. Now I've got my leftover beef that I had bought from Winn-Dixie. I'm weighing it out so I have exactly a pound and I'm gonna put it in my freezer bags and then freeze it up. Look at the freezer here. I love buying meat when it's on sale and putting it away in the freezer. And y'all ask me if grass-fed and organic is what I go for. I just go what's for on sale. If you wanna go strict keto, go for it all the way, but I go at what's on sale for me. Now going in with our keto queso, y'all. This is a staple. We make this every single week for Trey. This is basically what the kid lives off of for dinner. Other things too, if you follow me on my vlogs. But this is super simple. I have the recipe video linked down in the description box down below. I make it every single week. So most of y'all probably have this memorized by now. But we're going in with a pound of white American, a block of cream cheese. I've recently been using the less fat and I do like it. I don't feel like it has a difference there. A can of green chilies and two tablespoons of butter. Pop the lid on, put it on low. Watch it until it's all melted. And then you're gonna add some almond milk to thin it, thin it out. Y'all asked if you can taste the almond milk. Definitely not. All you can taste, y'all, is creamy cheese. That is it, and it's delicious. Making some easy chicken salad. I'm using the Kirkland Costco chicken breast. I'm actually using two cans. I added an extra can. I'm using these front porch pecans with sea salt. I had them left over, so good. A package of the celery sticks by Walmart and some Duke's mayonnaise. I mentioned before, I can't do the avocado. So we're gonna open up our chicken breast. Two cans, only showed one, but two cans because I wanna eat a can per day for lunch. I know that sounds like a lot, but I'm trying to up my protein game. So two cans going in here of the chicken breast. I'm gonna cut up an entire package of these little portion size celery sticks from Walmart. There's zero net carbs as y'all saw there. And these are great if you wanna take these just for snacking with some peanut butter or whatever for kids especially too. But I'm chopping mine up. I like to chop mine up super fine. Still have that crunch there, but not have like a huge piece. Same thing with my pecans. I'm gonna go in with 14 pieces, which is a serving, and I'm going to give this a coarse chop because I love having either walnuts or pecans in my chicken salad. Y'all comment down below if you're like that too. If we weren't on keto, I'd be putting some cranberries in here too, or some grapes, just saying. 
That Grill Mates Chicken Montreal is so good in here. It gives it great flavor. Salt and pepper too. Make sure you season this up because you don't want it to be bland because we're not going to add anything else but a half a cup of Duke's mayonnaise. You can add mustard in here as well. That would definitely give it some extra flavor, but I'm just going to go in with mayonnaise because that's what I like. I'm going to go in and add some more spices. I felt like it needed just a little bit more. I like a lot of spice and a lot of flavor in my food, y'all. So you're going to see that I spice things up a lot. So there is my serving. I'm going to portion this out in two of these bento boxes because we're not going to be heating this up so I can use the plastic. And again, that's about a can per day as far as what we're eating for lunch. So the macros on this were super high as far as protein goes, way, way high and high in the fat and calorie range because of the mayonnaise. Now we're gonna go in and air fry some bacon to have on our chicken club sandwiches and just to have in general. This one I particularly don't like to get. It was a substitution in a Walmart pickup order because it's got a little bit of sugar, but nothing that we have to worry about because it's way down on the list. On your bacon, you wanna set it to 400 degrees and cook it for 10 minutes. Definitely check it depending on how thin or thick your bacon is, but this is what mine looked like after 10 minutes so delicious. We are going to be reheating this y'all. So if you want to undercook it just a little bit, if you're going to heat it up in the microwave on the go, going to work, you definitely don't want it to be burnt and then cook it in the microwave and it'd be extra crispy. You don't want that. So that's why I cook it just like this. And the other kind I've cooked a little under in the microwave. Now we're going to be making some protein to go on our club sandwiches. These are the Tyson black and chicken tenders. I talk about these all the time. I get these from Winn-Dixie. You can find them at Costco, some Costco's, not all. So I'm putting these in the oven and we're going to cook these for 18 minutes. You can also make these in the air fryer. Y'all people tell me they come out so good in the air fryer, but like I said, we're using it for all kinds of things. So I'm going to use the oven here. This is what they look like after 18 minutes. They are super spicy. So if you are sensitive to spice, you want to get a different kind and not these, but if you like spice, get them. I'm prepping some romaine hearts because I'm going to use this as my bun for my club sandwiches this week. Sometimes I'll make chaffles or sometimes I won't use any anything as a bun. I'll just eat the protein, but I want it to have like a sandwich consistency. So I'm going with a serving of the Tyson chicken tenders for each of my sandwiches here. It's about three tenders. And then I'm going to put two pieces of bacon on top of that. I have been loving bacon lately. What is my life without it? And then a piece of white sharp cheddar cheese, and then a tablespoon of the G Hughes honey mustard sauce on each of my tenders. I love that honey mustard dipping sauce. It is so, so good. Going in with the top of my romaine and that is it. I've got my club sandwich and it's good to go. And y'all, this is like legit one net carb. And just because of the chicken tenders, everything else is zero net carb. So this is a super low carb, filling high protein lunch on the go and super easy. No complication here, y'all. You know, I'm all about that easy life. Now I'm going to brine up some chicken breasts for my Chick-fil-A sandwiches I'm going to be making for the week. That video either should have already posted or will be coming to you on the channel. So definitely make sure your notifications are clicked, but I'm going to be putting some pickle juice right in the bag that it came in. These were already washed and prepped and frozen. So I have it partially thawing out. I'm going to add some pickle juice to it. I'm going to close the bag up and I'm going to let it sit overnight and marry in that pickle juice. It gives it that Chick-fil-A flavor that you want y'all when you eat those sandwiches spot on. This is the key and the secret right here. Let it marinate in some pickle juice. Watch for that video. It's going to be epic. Now we're going to go in with our flourless peanut butter cookies. These things are so good. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you what you need right now and how to make these in this video versus doing another one. I highly suggest you get this creamy a stir organic peanut butter by great value. It's one net carb for two tablespoons. So it makes our carb count low for these cookies. The macros will be in the description box along with the directions and the ingredients. One cup of peanut butter, a half a cup of monk fruit sweetener, and then we're going to go in with some white granular as well. I'm using this one by high key. It was very fine and I really, really enjoyed it. I think that's a third of a cup. Definitely check down below for all the measurements. Going in with some baking soda, half a teaspoon, then some pure vanilla extract, also half a teaspoon here as well. 
one egg, and that's it, y'all. How easy are these ingredients? And these cookies are so amazing. Give it a good mix. It is gonna be crumbly, don't get scared, okay? So it's gonna have this texture right here, nothing to fret about. Going in with some chocolate chip sugar-free, you can use Lily's. I'm going in with the Lakanto. I really like these as well. Give it a good stir, and then we're going to pop these on a cookie sheet. I'm using this awesome gadget I got from Amazon, and I'm just gonna be putting out one of each of these. This made way more than what the actual recipe called for. I think it made 21 cookies. But I had to go back and flatten them, guys. Do not cook them as balls as you see me putting them in right here. Go back and flatten them or they're gonna burn. So lesson learned for the first batch. Second batch came out awesome. I got this container from the Dollar Tree that y'all suggested actually, so thank you so much. And I'm gonna put my cookies in here and have them last all week. I even crumbled some of these cookies up on top of some Rebel ice cream, guys, and it was life. These cookies are so good. Warm them up, guys, after you've let them sit and they're gonna be delicious. So if you enjoy these weekly videos for batch cooking, y'all, please give it a huge thumbs up if you enjoy these. Definitely share it with a friend if they're looking for some keto motivation, they need some ideas in the kitchen, they are in a slump, they just need some motivation all the way around, definitely give it a big share. If you're not subscribed already, I'd love to have you a part of the YouTube family, so make sure you click that subscribe button down below and make sure that all your notifications are clipped so you never miss a batch cooking meal prep video from me every Sunday here on my channel. Thank you all so much for watching these videos. The love and support that you've been getting giving this new series has been mind blowing to me. So thank you all so much. And I hope these videos are helpful. I hope they're giving y'all some ideas and getting you motivated in the kitchen to make your week super stress-free and super easy. Y'all let me know what you're going to be batch cooking this week and get your meal prepping on like a boss y'all. I'll see y'all on the next one. Bye.